Okay, we're gonna uh, we're gonna tie an egg sucking leech with a dubbed uh, trilobal STS uh, head. You can use a chenille head on this. One of the things you'll, you're going to notice is that this doesn't have a rabbit strip tail out the back. There's a reason for that. Sometimes when you're fishing, a steelhead will not eat a fly that's that long. But they will eat a fly that's this long. Take that seriously. Well, you know, maybe. So another thing is that that, uh, that tail will sometimes wrap around your hook shank. These are very simple to tie, but they're extremely effective. Um, this is two-tone rabbit. It's uh, violet and purple. There are uh, many other colors available. Um, sadly to say, these work in black as well. But the two tones are really exciting, and if you want bright colors, you got bright colors. Subtle, you got subtle. So let me take this apart. This uh, this also has pseudo eyes. This is a really great uh, winter and summer steelhead fly hook. Very, it's a pretty hook to tie on. I'm very partial to a straight eye. I know you would only swing this fly personally, Jay, but it looks to me like this fly could be dead drift quite effectively. Um, I've heard that. I've heard that. I've heard that some people will go so far. Now, first, I'm going to put on these pseudo eyes. You can use lead eyes. Uh, there's all sorts of things. You know, now, you want to leave yourself enough room here to have a turn or so in front of the pseudo eyes. I, I get confused whether these are dumbbell eyes or barbell eyes, but these are really nice. They've got a pupil in them already, the pupil. Um, and again, I wrap around the base of those ties. Then I'll get the cap off my brush on zap, and I just put a little drop there and a little drop underneath. So, again, cross cut rabbit. Don't be stingy. You're going to want to cut off that first two, two and a half inches because it is waste. The fibers don't lay very well. Tie this in with the hair on the top side of that strip and pointing to the rear. Then we're going to wind this on. You don't need cement, you don't need tear mender. Are these, are these cross cut? Jay? These, I mean, you yes, may have mentioned yes, that. But Chris, that's... The, these are the cross. Now, a friend of mine said, So, Jay. Do you have to use crosscut to make one of these leeches? No, you don't. You can use standard strips. And this, what happens with the strips is that they, the hair points up more. So if you really want a bigger profile, you could just use the strips. I like these. I, I think the fly is a little bit more attractive. It, to me, it's more aesthetically pleasing to have that uh, have those hair fibers sweeping towards the rear. Now this is a uh, Mirage Opal Flash. It's very similar to Crystal Flash but it is uh, much brighter. Two strips on that side, two, two fibers trimmed to the back end of the rabbit. Two strips on this side and when you put this stuff in the water it just it stands out. So now I'm going to do if I was using chenille, um, and I better pay attention here because one of the challenges is getting, I'm using a dubbing loop. The challenges here is getting the right amount of dubbing, the, the right length in your dubbing loop. If you get too much, you just waste a lot and it's a little bit more challenging. If you don't get enough, you have to add another second loop. So I'm just going to spin this up 
and we're going to do a demo on some different types of dubbing twisters. I happen, I'm just old school, I'm used to using this silly thing. Rough this up a little bit. Got a little bit more than I want there. So, how do you do this? I go around the far side once, back around the hook on this side, around the near side, over the back, under the body. I think I got really lucky. Skill probably, well, the, you know, the thing I did, I forgot to bring my thread forward, so let's, let's adjust here as we go. That is just about the perfect amount of dubbing. Now you just kind of push those fibers back out of the way. Tie yourself a whip finish. And now <clears throat> a normal drop of cement, you'd be good to go. And normally I just do this on um, steelhead flies with bigger heads, but I'm 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 gonna I want to have a nice little shiny head on this fly. So I'm going to take a drop of liquid fusion, and since I can't find my bodkin on this table here, I'm use my tweezers. You think about this as it's very similar to a very slow setting epoxy. And it's going to make a very nice, shiny head. Very durable. I put that on there. Now, unfortunately, if I, um, if I just let this sit, that will sag. So I'm going to put it in my handy hook turner. And then I get on to tie and flies. And then here's what our product looks like. Tight in different colors, but and you can use chenille on the head, but I, I really like the 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 fuzzy, spiky, translucent light capturing. Are the, am I using all the right buzzwords in the Those fly? Those are great. Those are fantastic.